The British Film Institute's National Archive is a historical treasure trove. A quarter of a million films capturing the precious moments of a bygone era in sight and sound. But the staff here are fighting a constant battle to stop these flickering memories from being lost forever. To win the battle, they have to wade through enough film to stretch twice around the world and get through a lake of dry cleaning fluid. So, how do they do it? In the days before DVDs and digital downloads, a night at the movies was the number one form of entertainment. But the movies that engrossed the nation were printed on reels made with a nitrocellulose film base, a highly flammable material known as nitrate that caused catastrophic fires in early cinemas. And worse, the reels decay fast. Now, less than half of the films produced before 1950 still exist. So in the leafy suburbs of Hertfordshire, England, the British Film Institute is in a race against the clock to preserve and restore thousands of old films before they turn to dust. This isn't a few old reels of film left in a cupboard. Three 7,000 square foot vaults rise 32 feet into the air, housing more than a quarter of a million titles. And storing this much history is a major headache because film degrades in warm air. So giant air conditioning units keep the temperature a fridge like 40 degrees. But the guys here worry more about the heat than the cold. This nitrate film stock has a nasty habit of spontaneously exploding. Storing it safely takes more than a no smoking sign. The first layer of defense is these vaults made from eight inch thick blast proof concrete. And Scott Stark has the scary job of overseeing these chambers of horror. We have 24 separate nitrate vaults here at Berkhamsted. There's a glass ceiling above each vault. There's 8,000 gallons of water on the roof. But if there was a fire here, even 8,000 gallons wouldn't be enough to put it out. Once alight, the nitrocellulose releases its own oxygen, so it would even burn underwater. All they can do is contain the fire so it doesn't spread to the other vaults. To tackle the restoration, the film's got to come out of safe storage. Right now, the major restoration project is Listen to Britain, a 19-minute Oscar-nominated documentary showing Britain during the darkest days of World War II. It will take over six months to restore the 1,800 feet of footage. There's no such thing as a perfectly preserved copy of a 70-year-old film. After decades of running through projectors and rattling around in tins, the film is covered with scratches and imperfections. So they've unearthed five different copies of Listen to Britain to make one good one, but these originals are far too valuable to be cut up. So Claire West has to select the best frames from each version and make copies. A film projects 24 frames a second. So in this 19-minute documentary, she has almost 140,000 frames to compare. This is an absolutely brilliant job because it's so unique and it's a real honor to be able to actually look at this material. You never know what you're going to look at next until you actually open the can. But even with that many frames to choose from, some are bound to be too damaged to be run through a copy machine. A damaged perforation could rip a whole reel of film. So in the lab, film repair expert Alan Trott rebuilds the tiny perforations that spool the reel through the projector. If the new version of Listen to Britain was just slapped straight together out of five different copies of the film, it would be a Frankenstein's monster of mismatched parts. To even out the differences in exposure and contrast between the versions, 
They're matched up in a process called grading. The results are fed through to an antique machine next door. The optical wet gate printer is like a projector and a camera rolled into one. In this machine, the old nitrate will be used as a negative to reprint the film on modern stock. But even the best segments of the old film are marred by tiny scratches that could be massively magnified on the big screen. To fill in the cracks, the film is printed through, believe it or not, dry cleaning fluid. Dry cleaning fluid transmits light just like the old fashioned emulsion that used to coat film. So the printer churns out a scratch free image to make Listen to Britain look as good as it sounds. After the film has been processed and reassembled, there's nothing to do but sit back and be transported to 1942. The rejuvenated film looks as good as it did at its first screening. One more little piece of history saved from extinction with a little love and a bucket of cleaning fluid.